this was never the, about south versus the east. Why spread plants away from the Thailand core? The answer, because... Let's question why funding flows to Assam, Andhra and Gujarat while talent density lives in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Because let's take a look at India's semiconductor and EI infrastructure decade. It's not a talking point anymore and it's a geography and all of us know that. And over the last 18 months, mega deals, cabinet approvals and anchor units have been placed in Assam, Andhra Pradesh and Gujarat, even as the deepest chip design, EDA and EI engineering talent remains concentrated in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. This isn't a contradiction, it is industrial design. Let's look at Micron. They have the ATMP mega facility at Sansad, Gujarat. You know, the phase one clean room is already validated and production ramp timelines have been published. Tata Electronics OSAT, you know, they have an advanced packaging hub at Jagi Road, Assam and the construction is already underway. Then of course, we all know the Google's $15 billion EI hub in Vishakapatnam, Andhra Pradesh and this is a gigawatt scale compute fiber and a new subsea gateway. Cabinet clears four more chip units worth 4,594 crore rupees, SIC devices and embedded glass packaging in Odisha and you have the MOSFET line in Punjab, system in package which is SIP in Andhra Pradesh which are all purpose built layers of the stack. We at front page called this early. In our episode on India's four new chip plants which are SIC devices, 3D glass, MOSFETs and SIP, we argued that the center is building end-to-end -end capability by distributing supply chain layers and not just simply chasing a single mega fab. That's precisely what the new approvals operationalize. So South India has earned its tech density the hard way. You know, you have design shops, IP teams, tool chain skills, hyperscaler research and development, and of course the startup spillovers. Bengaluru, Chennai is India's design and AI brain. But fabs don't follow the resumes because fabs follow power, water, banks, sports, incentives and permitting velocity and the central government's sovereignty calculus. That's why assembly, test, packaging and AI compute are being placed where infrastructure liquidity is the fastest to mobilize where design gravity remains in the southern part of the country. So you have Micron Sansad, right? That marks speed plus industrial land and policy scaffolding. Then Tata Osa Jagi Road is, you know, a culmination of the Northeast Indian industrialization packaging at scale and skill co-location. The Vaisag AI hub, of course, is coastal power plus subsea cable landing stations and GPU campus economics. Then Odisha, Punjab and Andhra Pradesh adds SIC devices, you know, bringing in EV power, embedded glass, 3D packaging in defense and AI sector. And of course, the MOFSET, which are ubiquitous switches SIP, you know, they bring the miniaturization into effect. And these are all not cookie cutter fabs, but capability gaps that are being filled. And this is distributed silicon by design. Because you have the design south, that is fab and the OSAT. The west and the eastern part of the country, they have the AI compute and the coastal region, they're nationally scaling up. This Kargi and Sama, you know, Sarma slugfest made the headlines. Assam CM calling Karnataka's ITBT minister as a first-class idiot? Kharge countering that his words were twisted and that firms were pressurized to shift sites. And a brawl obscures the signal. Yes, the South Indian part holds the talent density and the buyer pull and the central placement is prioritizing redundancy, dispersion and nation branding. Both can be true and need to be if India wants chip sovereignty. And on Andhra versus Karnataka over the $15 billion Google AI hub, Karnataka flagged subsidy math, EP touted competitive federalism and the outcome mirrors India's playbook. Compute on the coast, design inland and packaging in new corridors, a, re a resilience topology, not a single city bet. Front page said it before the fireworks in our four new chip plants breakdown, we mapped how India adds SIC in Odisha, embedded glass 3D packaging also in Odisha, MOSFET in Punjab, SIP in AP, and complete all the missing layers between the design labs and the AI data centers, just as countries like Taiwan and South Korea did, piece by piece, 
then all at once. We also noted why manufacturing sites chase utilities and permits, not just CV clusters, which is exactly what this month's placements confirm. So what New Delhi is really doing? Let's find out. Essentially, they're decentralizing risk. They're saying that no single point failure across water or power grids or ports should occur. And they're creating multiple on-ramps for global suppliers. Because you have Gujarat for ATMP, then you have Assam for OSAT, AP for Compute, and Odisha for materials and advanced packaging. They're all spread over the country. Then they're converting subsidies into capability because each placement fills a named gap, whether it's in power devices, packaging, discrete devices, or SIP. And they're also leveraging politics for permanence. It's a national semiconductor story that spans east, west, coast, and not just the south. So what the south continues to own is that ASIC and SOC design, verification, EDA talent, hyperscalia AI labs, and the systems engineering the brains that create sustainable demand for whatever the plants make next. Hence, don't expect design centers to necessarily follow the fabs. Let's look at the risks, to be honest. You have the yield and ramp, you know, the ATMP OSAT timelines are unforgiving because execution and slippage will kill the narrative. So, Micron's lab milestones are the lead indicator. And you also have the human capital at sight because skill pipelines Jagi Road and Vizag must scale very fast. Otherwise, teams will shuffle from Bengaluru, Chennai and it's going to be costly and fragile. And of course, you have the power and water economics because gigawatt scale AI hubs such as Vizag need stable tariffs plus a green mix or the total cost of ownerships breaks the entire thesis. Then the policy must continually apply across all the state cycle because these bets mature over 7 to 10 years and any sort of flip-flops are going to be super fated. So now India has a pipeline from materials, devices, packaging, AI compute to applications. While this semiconductor tug of war plays out, Karnataka isn't just sitting idle, it's moving up the stack. Because just last week, Karnataka's Minister for Science and Technology shared this. Karnataka is ready to lead India's quantum leap and they announced a 1000 crore rupee quantum vision a dedicated Q city near Bengaluru and welcoming a thousand crore rupee worth private quantum computing center that is committed to building the quantum capital of Asia. So while others fight for fabs, Karnataka is staking claim to the next frontier from chip manufacturing to quantum manufacturing of intelligence. Clearly, Karnataka is emerging as a state defining the layer above semiconductors, the layer where compute turns into cognition. And our final take is what we think is that this was never the, about South versus the East. It's design South, placement nationwide, and a redundant export grade network that can survive shocks and lead an AI century. So front page questioned this before the political fireworks. Why spread plants away from the talent core? The answer, because sovereignty is a systems problem. If India executes, we won't just host fabs, we'll fabricate an entire map. So, four silicon corridors, one AI economy. The story isn't about who got what subsidy. It's about whether India can turn placements into yield and yield into power device packaging and AI compute exports at scale.